You can take your Bibles and begin to turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 1. Let me tell you a little, little story first, all right? Um, C.S. Lewis, Clive Staples Lewis, you probably all know the name, you Chronicles of Narnia, the movies, you know that those were taken from children's books that he wrote many years ago. During that time when he wrote those children's books, he also wrote another book that was called The Problem of Pain. He wrote this in about 1940. It was during the, the Second World War. So the questions that he dealt with in that, in that particular book were very important. He talked about why do things like war happen and why are, are men killed and, and these things. And his answers were, were pretty well received during that time because there was so many questions over what was going to happen in the world? Was, was this the end of the world? Was, and on and on and on. And um, as and he was young, he, was, he, he had already written the, the Narnia books, but he was relatively young. He had made some statements over his life that um, he was never going to get married. Uh, he was fine being single. And as he got older, it was about in his 50s, the way that I can figure it out. When he got older, he, he met a woman, a woman by the name of Joy Davidman. Joy Davidman was from the United States. She was a, a writer in the United States, a journalist. Um, he was in, in England at the time, and that's, that's where he lived, and that's where he taught, and that's where he wrote. As she visited, she had a son and, um, who was really into C.S. Lewis writings, and so they set up a meeting, and they met. And then over a period of many years, there was correspondence back and forth between the two, and and as she would visit England, they would get together. And over a period of years, they, they kind of grew an affection for an affection for each other. And um, it came a point where they, they, they fell in love. And as they were going through this time of, of being together, uh, Joy was pronounced with, with cancer. She had cancer and... Uh, so they, they got married, and as the cancer grew, uh, he fell more in love with her and realizing that it, it, was, it was deeper than he'd ever thought it was. He, he thought he was just doing her a favor when, when he decided to marry her, and, and uh, their love grew, and, and her cancer went into remission. Um, I'm not sure whether it was from somewhere between two and four years, depending on what you read, but her cancer went into remission. They traveled many places of the world together, and the, the cancer came back, and, and she died. Well, during the time when he, that he wrote the book in 1940, the statements that he made about, about suffering were, 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 were accepted at that time. But when his wife got ill, and there was no cure, and she finally died, um, the, the things that he wrote in that first book didn't, didn't comfort him. They, they didn't bring the, the satisfaction. In fact, I, I wrote some things down, some things that, that he, you know, where are they? I wrote them somewhere. I haven't taught for a while, so I don't know where I have stuff. But. Um, and some of the things are, are just, you wonder what happened to this man who, who wrote about uh, uh, the, the Chronicles of Narnia and, and, and wrote about uh, Aslan the, and protected the kids and so forth. Um, let me see. He says, when you were happy, this is written after his wife and the terrible things that he went through. When you are happy, so happy, you have no sense of needing him. So happy that you are tempted to feel his claims upon you as an interruption. If you remember yourself and turn to him with gratitude and praise, you will be, or so it feels, welcomed with open arms. But go to him when your need is desperate, when all other help is vain. And what do you find? A door slammed in your face and a sound of bolting and double bolting on the inside, and oh, that silence. And there were other statements he made, and as you go through, through, through church history, you're going to find a lot of writings by men and women when, when the suffering came and the pain came, there were the questions. And, and so my, what I decided I wanted to talk about this morning was, was simply this, there, there are answers, and it's going to take a period of time to discuss all of those answers with you. But I just want to open up a, a, um, 
a dialogue with you this morning and just kind of scratch the surface and, and get us to thinking a little bit. Because God is everything that he says, whether we see it or not. And as we turn to uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 1, Paul writes this at a time when um, he's going through terrible things. He's not even, we'll see it in the verses here in a moment. He's not even certain that they're going to live, him and, him, him and the guys that he's with. We, we don't know whether that's um, disease or, or terror, physical illness, whether it's depression. We don't know what it is, but we know that it was so hard on him that he didn't know whether he was going to live or not. Pick it up at verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort those who are in trouble with the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by God. For as the sufferings of Christ abound in us, so our consolation also abounds through Christ. Now, if we are afflicted, it is for your consolation and salvation which is effective for enduring the same sufferings which we also suffer. Or if we are comforted, it is for your consolation and salvation. And our hope for you is steadfast because we know that as you are partakers of the sufferings, so also you will partake of the cons consolation. For we do not want you to be ignorant, brethren, for our trouble which came to us in Asia, that we are burdened beyond measure, above strength, so that we despaired even of life. Yes, we had the sense of death in ourselves, that we should not trust in ourselves, but in God who raises the dead, who delivered us from so great a death, and does deliver us, in whom we trust that he will still deliver us. You also helping together in prayer for us, that thanks may be given by many persons on our behalf, for the gift granted to us through many. So we talk about comfort. Comfort is mentioned uh, 11 times in the verses that we just read. It's mentioned 29 times in this book and uh, 2 Corinthians. So it must be something that's very important to us. It must be something that God really wants us to get and to understand. Now, when we think of comfort, uh, what do we, how, do we, how do we get comfort? Well, many of us, and you can tell I've tried some of it, uh, you eat a lot, all right? Um, you, you think that, that there is comfort in, in certain foods, and, and there is uh, for a period of time. It doesn't last. Uh, there, there's comfort in, I don't want to list the foods because you'll leave before I'm through, but, you know, uh, just mac. I'm not going to list macaroni and cheese and, you know, some potatoes and gravy and fried chicken. I'm not going to mention any of those things, but some of those are, are you know, comforting and, and um, oh, for others, comfort is, is just withdrawing when they're going through something heavy or something that like we've just read about or, or losing someone dear to them. Uh, and the pain is so deep and, 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 and so, so hard. They, they draw into themselves and, and they, they, they get by themselves. They don't want to be around anybody else. And maybe that's comfort for a while. Others become very social. And they, they want to get involved and they want to do volunteer work and they want to just yeah, do busy work and, and try to get comfort that way. And, and um, maybe that, that helps for a while. Others may try some, you know, uh, drinking some hot chocolate. Maybe that helps. Others drink something else. Um, they don't call it Southern comfort for nothing, you know. And <laughs> so you try to find comfort that way. And, uh, <laughs> or, or we try to find comfort in, well, now I'm going to go there. Some of you will say he's come back very judgmental. No, I, <laughs> I left that way. But. It's, it, it, we, we look for these things and we're, we're, we're trying to find, and what, what, what do you think comfort is? Comfort, we, we define comfort maybe as the absence of pressure or, or, or the feelings we're going to get better. And, and, and we do things and we tell people, hey, it's going to get better. And, and that's comfort for a moment maybe. You know, and it's comfort when people show up and when they, when they hug you and they pray for you and bring things, but they have their own lives also. And at a point, they, they have to get busy in, in, in what they do. And, and there you are in, in your despair and your pain and in your loss. And, and uh, so uh, the platitudes are nice and, and, and they're good and, and they help, you know, for a time. But uh, to, to make us 
feel better. It, it's just, it's, it's not enough. And then I, as I, I read these verses and I've, I've been reading so much in the word and trying to, to get a grasp on, on what this is all about. You know, I mean, I've, I've never experienced such pain, never experienced such, such loss. Um, you know, when you've been married for almost 58 years, you, you just totally become one person. And, you know, half of you is, or three-fourths of you is ripped away. And, and, and so you're, you're trying to find out where, where do you go from here and, and, and how do you continue on? And, and, and we're looking for that comfort where we're going to feel better. Well, it's, it's interesting to me, to me that... Um, this, this word that appears here nine times in this section has more to do with strengthening than, than soothing. The, the Greek word for comfort is to help by giving courage. This comfort that he's talking about is not a feeling. It's a truth. It's being stronger. It's, it's, it's receiving strength. It's receiving strength by um, people in your life. I received so much strength from, from many of you and, and with the words and the cards, and absolutely. But there were some that were, were close to me and they, and they stood with me. I, I have a couple of pastors that, that, that I know that, that would call and I had, I had one, one friend of mine that, um, Pastor Troy, and, and, and he called the moment that he heard, he said, I'm on my way. And I said, y you, can't, you can't come, Troy. You've got a situation with, with your wife, and, and you can't leave. And he said, I just want to stand with you. And I said, no, don't come. I have family, and, and it's okay. And um, during my period of, 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 of grief and, and pain, he was calling every day and texting every day, and I'm standing with you. And a moment's notice, I'm, I'm there. And, and to me, that was, that was somebody coming into my life, bringing strength, and they weren't even there. It was that I knew that there was a phone call that I could make and, and there would be strength, there would be encouragement. So, so the comfort is, is, is not a feeling. Comfort is not something you find, okay? Comfort is something that finds you. As, as we are seeking God and as we're, 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 we're trying to uh, understand and we're, we're, we're pliable, in, in his presence, and we're allowing him to, to do what he wants to do. There, there's a strength that comes, and, and, and people bring strength, and many of you did. Like I said at, at the beginning, just with a phone call, and just, I know that you were praying. I know many of you are still praying, and I, I so appreciate that, and I, 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 I know you're praying, and it, it makes big change, but, but, change but, but there are times when, 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 when people can be there. And so that that strength comes from from God. <laughs> I was talking to Sandy this morning, and I, I just just heard this, and and um, we've been talking a lot recently about suffering and and what that means, and and how how God has designed suffering. We we don't look at it. He says, "Count it all joy when." these things, you know, uh, trials are going to come upon you. And um, he sent his disciples out and he, you know, he, he, he told them, he said, pick up your cross and, and follow me and the things that I've done, you're going to do greater things. And I, I think it, in that includes the suffering. When he was hanging on the cross and he said, you know, it is finished. What was finished was the suffering. The agony in the garden was the suffering that Jesus went through for you and for me. And we, when he says we will do what he, there's going to be times of intense suffering. There's going to be times of Greek grief. There's going to be times of, times of agony. And, and the comfort is not just, hey, it's going to be okay. The comfort is that God comes in and he begins to work things on us that can be worked no other way. But only through the suffering can we experience him in ways that we experience no other way. Do I like suffering? Absolutely not. But, but do I understand a little bit that I didn't understand before that in that suffering, I'm going to experience his strength? A caterpillar. A caterpillar goes into a cocoon. And in that cocoon, there's a process 
for that caterpillar to come out a butterfly on the other side. I am told, and I researched this to make sure it's true, if you cut, up, cut, op cut open that cocoon, that caterpillar will not exist. It will never be a butterfly. The process of going through the metamorphosis, that process brings them to the end result. See, we must go through things that we go through. We don't talk about this. We don't want to talk about suffering. We don't want to talk about grief. We don't want to talk about pain. But ladies and gentlemen, every one of us will experience grief, suffering, and pain. And to say, it'll be better tomorrow isn't enough. We need to say that there is a God who cares. There's a God that will come alongside of us and reveal things to us. I'm not talking about deep, dark, spiritual things that nobody can understand, but reveal things about who he is that he cares. In the middle of the night when I'm, when I'm laying there and I was crying and, and, and God would just be there and there would be a peace. That's the peace that they talk, the word talks about that passes all understanding. The grief wasn't gone, but the peace is real. And, and there's that process that we all must go through. There is suffering and and I think that's what Lewis went through when, when, when he finally, in his own life, and there are other quotes uh, that, that I could read, but then in his life he said, it's so easy to talk about these things and, until it becomes real to you. And then you realize that there's a process that, that God takes us through. Hey, guys, we're being prepared for eternity. And I, I think that we've... <laughs> When we talk about salvation, it's, it's salvation so that we can know Jesus and spend an eternity with him. It's not salvation so that we could never have another problem. It's not salvation so that we will never have another pain or a, a, another problem with grief. It's salvation for eternity. And in that, every disciple who, I mean, in our generation, we've been teaching the church for so long that everything's okay, everything's good. You know, if, you, if, if it's not good for you, it's because you don't have enough faith. Baloney. Man, the rain falls on the just and the unjust. We live in a stinking world where there is sin and hurt and pain, and we, we experience that stuff, but we need to understand that God is sufficient to strengthen us through that. And sometimes it's a process. It's not always instantaneous. There's a process of being strengthened, and as we're going through that process, he's being revealed. The Father, it's interesting to me. Now, when we come to the New Testament, we see the Holy Spirit is called the Comforter, right? The Paracletos. What does that mean? He comes to us and says, okay, it's going to be okay tomorrow. No, he comes and brings strength. He gives us the ability to walk through that. Now, with these verses, it's kind of interesting. Um, look at this. It says in, in, in verse 3, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort those who are in trouble with the comfort that which we ourselves are comforted by God. Now look at this. Twice it says that the Father comforts us. The Father is the God of all comfort. In the Olympics of 1992, a young man's name was is um, Derek Redman. He was scheduled to win the 400 meter race. And as he was running, he noticed his hamstring popped, excruciating pain when that happens. He got up and tried to continue to the race. And his dad got out of the stands. They tried to stop him. He went past security. He got to his son, put his arms around him, said, son, we'll make it together. That's what his dad said afterwards. That's what he told him. Hang on to me. We'll make it together. They tried to stop them a few times. The, authority, the, the, the security and the officials tried to stop him. He would have nothing of it. I'm going to get my son across the finish line. And he did. And when I saw that, I remembered it from seeing it years ago. And when I, when I thought about that again this last week, I thought, you know, what an illustration of our Father, the God of all comfort. We're trying, we're running the best we can. We're going as fast as we can, man. We're doing everything we can and we trip up. 
We get up and we try to make it. We're going to try it on our own, man. And we stumble some more. What happens? The God of all comfort comes alongside, puts his arm around us, and says, we'll make it together, son. And along the way, I try to try, I try other things. Maybe that'll help. He says, get that out of the way. Maybe that'll help. Don't bother me. Maybe that'll help. Chuck and I are going to make it, man. And I'm here to tell you this morning, whatever you're going through, whatever the grief, whatever the pain, whatever comfort you need, he is the God of all comfort. He just, the father didn't come up and say, okay, son, you gave it your best. I'm proud of you. You don't have to get up and go any farther. Now, so many people would say that. Hey, you gave it your best. It hurts. I know. We'll get the crew out here. We'll get you out. We'll get you into the hospital. But that dad didn't do that. He said, I know what you've gone through. I know what this means to you. I'll carry on myself if I have to. And that's what the God of all comfort says to each and every one of us, man. Hey, trust me. Hey, hang on to me. When it hurts so bad, when the pain is so excruciating, and you lay there for a minute, and then you try to get up. I've gone through these experiences over these last three and a half months. And you try to get up, and you go a little bit, and you fall again. <laughs> because the pain is so deep. And the pain is so real. And you try to do it again. Well, if I, if I pray enough, if I, if, 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 if I read enough, if I, if I trust enough, if I have enough faith, I can make it through. And I keep trying those own, every one of those things, and I keep falling down. Then all of a sudden, the Father comes alongside, and I recognize it. He doesn't say, you've done a good job. It's okay. He said, hey, you prepared you're going to finish the race. And he spoke to my heart and says, Chuck, you're going to finish the race. I don't know if I was coming back to you guys or not. I didn't know what I was doing. But he said, you're going to finish the race. And you're going to finish the race this time leaning on me totally. Because I will give you the strength. And when you try to do something else and make it on your own, I'm going to shoo him away because I'm all that you need. And then he goes on in this section. This is the last thing I want to say, man. He goes on in this section. And he says, and then the comfort that you receive, comfort one another with the same comfort. So I'm here to tell you. That means when he strengthens you, and this meant so much to me. When I read that, this is what he said to me. He said, I will always give you enough comfort to, to take care of you and give you enough to give away. That's why he said, comfort others in the way that you've been comforted. So it's not just giving us a little and giving me a little and you'll make it through, Chuck. But it's, I will comfort you so that you can comfort others. And all of a sudden, I, I, my, my empathy for, for, for hurts and, and pains has, has grown. <laughs> and I always thought I was compassionate. But after going through this, I, I realized there are times when I, I, I've, I've, I've experienced a new comfort. I, I, I've experienced that comfort is beyond. It's going to be okay tomorrow. Here's a chocolate cake for today. You know, and those things are fine, but man, it goes beyond that. It's me coming up to you saying, I'll walk you through with this. I, I, I will be your comfort. I will be your strength. I will come alongside. The word for comfort in, in our language really came from the Latin where we get the word like fortitude, okay? We, we, we get a new fortitude. We get a, we get a new strength. We, we get a new understanding. We get a new push because the God of all comfort, he's put his arms around me, man. And I want to tell you, he's no respecter of persons. You know, maybe some of you are here today and, and you're on the top of your world and, and life is wonderful. Praise God. Comfort other people. Maybe there are some of you here that you're you're in the you're 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 in the in, in, in the depths of, of of wherever it is, man, and, and it's painful. It hurts. Let God comfort you. The world can't do it. Friends try, but we're not gonna do it unless we understand it brings it's bringing us strength, not just a, a few words. 
And those words are wonderful, but it's, it's not enough. It's standing there. My friend Troy still texts, still calls, still makes sure I'm okay. And there are others, but that was just one example. You know. And I know that you, you're doing that for me too, but we need to do it for, for one another, man. We need to learn that, that God is sufficient. The Father, the God of all comfort, Man, just understand now, and I've said it a million times over this morning, but understand comfort is not just, it's not a feeling. It's a strengthening. That's the comfort, a strengthening. That I, I can't make it to that finish line on my own. Jesus, I've been running it for over 50 years, and I'm, I'm tired. <laughs> I have no more strength. It hurts. I'm in pain. He'll fight his way through anything to get to me. Pick me up and take me to the finish line, man. That's my hope. That should be all of our hope.